All right, dear friend, I had to get one more time in, one more Easter celebration. Mrs. L and I and the crew had a beautiful day today. I want to just tell you something. I want to tell you that we were here. We had a wonderful day, a great, great day. It was wonderful, wonderful. And um, we went to a place in, what county is that? Hunterdon County? Hunterdon County in, in Jersey. And it was a, went to a place that was built in 1800 in a uh, town that was started in 1765. And it is, uh, love it. Absolutely steeped in American culture, American history. And I walked in, sat down, and immediately I looked to my left, and this very nice fellow, his name is Charles. I don't know if Charles is listening, but Charles said, hello, Lionel. And I always think, oh, and I did my best to always shake hands and thank people. I, I said, he said, uh, I, uh, you, you not, not saved me, but you, you, we, we, I met you during COVID and, and here I am. I said, well, that is wonderful. Thank you. Such a good, it was a great, great feeling. People were happy today. Families were out. Just a, just a wonderful day. It was just a splendid, the most beautiful weather you can possibly imagine. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, just without. So I wanted to just do another. Another Easter thing. But I want to tell you something. Every now and then we have. I have a, a certain. Well shall we say. Connected to the family. So to speak. And I asked her, I said, what do you, what do your friends think? Because she always kind of tells me, I'm interested. And um, 30s, you know, kind of hip. Um, very, very interesting because I always have these, these sample groups. I look to it. I said, what do you, what are people telling you? What are the subjects that you are, are listening to? And, and what, what is the source of your data? Where do you get your information from? And the first thing she said was that among her colleagues and friends and associates, the thing that everybody was talking about was the Baltimore Bridge falling. They said, this story stinks. And I love it. I said, well, what do you mean? They, it just, they, now think about this. They sense something. They recognize something. And you do too. There's something about this. There's something about there's something about everything, and they're all independently researching this. They know something is wrong. They know this. They don't believe this story. They don't. You know how you don't know. You know you you don't know things. For example, if you said, "What happened to Uncle Dave? Uncle Dave's dead. What happened? Well, he stubbed his toe and died." And you said, "Wait a minute, what?" And they say. Well, you're not a doctor. Wait a minute. You don't stub your toe and die. Well, how do you know? Are you a neurologist? Excuse me. I'm not an, a lunatic. You don't stub your toe and die. I know this. I know enough about reality. You don't have to do this. Well, that's what they say. Oh, are you a bridge expert? Oh, do you know about, or are you an engineer now? Oh, you know about maritime? Is that, oh, boy, I didn't know you knew all this. Stuff. That's the first thing they tell you. because. You recognize this case stinks. It's rotten, rotten to the core. It stinks. It smells. It's it's horrid. That's the beautiful part about this. I want to talk to you about this. I want to go through this. I want you to listen so carefully to what I'm saying. And we're going to talk about also Kate and Diddy. The Diddy case is blowing up out of proportion, out of proportion. But before I start, my dear friends, I'm going to say, first of all, thank you so much. Happy Easter, of course. Hit that live button. Hit the live button. That makes no sense. You're, you're already here. What I meant to say is hit the subscriber button. Make sure you you hit the the the, the button that indicates that you are um, uh, attuned to live videos and the like. Also, make sure you like this video because liking, you know how they, the whole algorithm thing works. But before we begin... Before we begin, let me listen very, very carefully to this important and critically important word from our sponsor regarding emergency food. 
Let's talk about a very serious subject, emergency food. That's right, emergency food. Now, I know at first blush, it's difficult for most people to think about something that they just, just take for granted, ever reaching, you know, emergency status. We're used to stores always being open, deliveries always made, no supply chain disasters, no, no ransomware catastrophes, you know, shutting down gas stations, no trucking strikes, no war, no protests from farmers, no mysterious Chinese weather balloons, nothing, nothing catastrophic in terms of weather. Well, that can't happen to us, right? And I understand it's a defense mechanism that we have because the idea of ever not being able to eat or locate food is seemingly incomprehensible to most people. But think about this. It's not. That's why it's time for you to go to my site, preparewithlionel.com. Preparewithlionel.com has the deal of deals for you. Take it as a, as a starter set, an introduction set. You've been putting off emergency food for too long. Some people still have a thing about prepping as though prepping for emergency is foolish. Now, right now, you can save $200 on the three-month emergency supply kit. This is unbelievable. 22 varieties with a 25-year shelf life, 25 years, 2,000 calories a day in six rugged buckets, 120 pounds of food. Could you go three months, 90 days if stores closed? Be honest. Could you go a week without any trips to the store? I don't think so. I'm not talking about having stuff in your cabinet. I'm not talking about banana chips and jerky. I'm talking about food, real food. So go right now to preparewithlionel.com. This moment right now, preparewithlionel.com, preparewithlionel.com. Go now and thank me later. I want to say again why important it is for all of us to recognize this thing, this, this, important, um, this important aspect of common sense. Always ask yourself, common sense, when something doesn't make sense to you. Now, how many of you, dear wonderful people, still don't buy this story? You're still having a hard time with this Boston, Boston, this Baltimore Bridge story, the the Francis Scott Key Bridge. How many of you are saying, wait a minute, I don't give a damn what they say. I think it stinks. The story stinks. How many? How many? And what is it that makes you do it? Because you know why you have common sense? Think about this. You as a juror are asked to listen to cases of Bobby murder. You'll hear ballistics and chemistry and DNA and CSI. You know about that. Or are you an expert, I should say? Well, no, but you're given facts. You're given you know, information and clues regarding it, and then you act accordingly. Well, you always do this. You have, you have always scientific evidence regarding DUIs and blood tests and whether drugs are drugs and all the time. But yet, whenever you say, I'm not buying this story, like I have a hard time. This sounds this sounds very strange, perhaps maybe. But when the um, that that tanker Trump whatever whatever that thing is called when it hit the bridge, it it it, it fell just like immediately. It was like the fastest drop. It's like that's it. You bump into one part and the whole thing falls. I mean, this is the way they build this. This is the way, this, see, we've been through this with 9-11. They say, you don't know anything about buildings. Wait a minute, but I've seen buildings fall down in in demolitions in in, in, uh, Las Vegas. Oh, there you go again. And and they always call you crazy. Now, the second thing, the second story is, where's Kate? Now, I know you might not care about that because you're saying to yourself, well, look, I'm an American. I really, I don't really care about Kate. And I, I, look, I kind of dig it, sort of. But this one fascinates me to know when. Where is she? She didn't show up today. Has anybody seen her ever? And the other day, you know something's up when you say, wait a minute, I don't buy this, whether it's AI, I don't know whether it's AI, but that really weird speech she gave the other day with a painting behind her, the painting of flowers. And then you say, hey, I think these, how dare dare you? I know conspiracy theory. Shut up. I know what a painting looks like and the flowers aren't moving. What do you think I am? Stupid? Oh, are you a flower expert? Are you a wind expert? Are you an atmospheric expert? This is what they do to you. This is what these people do. They always, and what, and you know, you're right because you only get flack when you're over the target. The only reason they're telling you something is because you're correct. Think about it. If you were crazy, if you said, I think Elvis is alive, nobody would bother you. They say, okay, all right, Sparky, 
No, I think Elvis is alive. Okay. They kind of laugh at you and they move along. But if Elvis was alive, what do you think they tell you? What do you mean by that? What are you, an expert? What are you, crazy? That's how you can tell you're right. So the bridge story, quick show of hands, is very unscientific. But how many of you, despite all of the evidence and all of discussions and all of the talk and all about everything, how many of you, dear, wonderful, sweet people, don't believe a word of the bridge story? How many? How many of you say the bridge story is caca del toro, bovine egesta? How many of you think it is BS with a capital B? How many? How many? How many? Think about it. How many of you folks say, I don't believe, I don't believe this story. Caca del Toro. Look at that, Diane. Look at this. Gloria Day says BS. And if Gloria Day says BF, that's it. MF says, I'm suspicious. I want more information. I like that. Let's noodle this. I like this. See, you're, you're smart. You know what's going on. Make way for Queen Megan. Oh, my God. Don't even, don't, oh, that's, that's, wow. Okay, second. Now, I know some people, and who've said this, and, and this is, you got to be very careful about this. I know people who said, I think Megan's dead. And I'm thinking, you don't have any evidence of that. Just because you're not seeing somebody, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of, I mean, wh 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 what do you think, why, do, wh what do you think would be the purpose of these people in the event, God forbid, that's true. What would be the motivation of the royal family saying, Look, she's dead. We got to say something. I don't know. Well, when do we say something? How do we explain? What are we waiting for? What are we? Why are we? Why are we? What is the benefit of this? How are we benefiting? People want to know. People would lay up, lay off us. Things would be better off. Let's assume there was something actually nefarious. You think they would want you? They would want you to know, so you'd feel sorry for them, and you'd say, "Look, leave them alone." You be, because you can't. You're going to have to tell if that's true. And I don't have any reason to believe it. It could be true. Nothing's beyond the realm of possibility, but why? Why are they doing this? The whole thing stunk from the beginning. Remember when these people said, oh, she has, she's had abdominal surgery. Where is she? Um, oh, she's fine. Well, why does she went? Well, she's, no, no, she went home. She went home? Yes, she went home. Oh, look, here's a picture. This looks Photoshopped. How dare you? Okay, it was Photoshopped. Oh, she's a rapscallion, that, oh, that playful Kate. Look, she's a Photoshop enthusiast. What? Yes, she, this is a hobby. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. What are you saying? I mean, yes, she's a, she's a, uh, she's, she's a, she purported to do this. Yes. And, oh, and here's another one she did. She did this other one too. She does Photoshop pictures. Why? Why is she fooling us? Well, that's her hobby. Her hobby is fooling us? Does she think this is funny? Well, no. Oh, look, here's a picture of her. Where? At the at the farmer's market. Look, she's out right by Adelaide Cottage. There she is. Who? This one. That's not Kate. Oh, yes, it is. That's a 20. It's not her. What, are you an expert? At yes, I know what people look like. That's not Kate. Now, why is this own why why does this one guy have a have a, a camera? People can't fart. We we people go out to eat, they take pictures of their food. Everybody's got a camera. People are taking everywhere. There's an APB, there's a bolo, there's a be on the lookout for Kate all over the world. You're at this place and you say, Holy sh is this that's Kate? Quick, get a camera. Click, 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 click. Swarming, picking up the phone. She's here. She's here. They would have picked up and talked to photo, uh, you know, news people, and they would have zoomed in. They would have also noticed this huge security contingent for the wife and the, the queen consort or the future king of England. Nothing. The story doesn't make any sense. No, the only picture we had of her was some sniper shot about 50 miles away. Come on, man. And then she comes out the other day in that weird flat. Did you see did did you see the 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 grade of the photo the the grade it was like diaphanous and pasty and 
It was weird. Okay. Now, here's the best of the best of the best. Diddy. Oh, my God. Now, most people, as you know, most people, I know this might surprise you, but I'm not a big, I'm not a, uh, I'm not as proficient in all things, um, uh, dare I say, uh, hip hop and the like. But Uptown Records, I believe, I, th- th- this this is where you, t- uh, internet is terrific, and X, thank you, Elon Musk. I was watching this. One, this one piece regarding Uptown Records. Uptown Records, and I am watching, I guess it was Uptown Records. This really is something. Ah, yes, Uptown Records. Uptown Records, look at this, Uptown Records. Uh, found by Andre Harrell. This is 1986. Andre Harrell, dead. Okay. Heavy D, dead. Uh, let me see who else was there. Kim. Forgive me. Oh, here we go. Yes. Check out this I'll be sure. Almost that stroke. Kim Porter dead. I'll be sure and Diddy are the only ones there. Now, let me stop right there. Everybody who is anybody in the in if in, and, and by the way, if you think of this in terms of just just sheer detective interest. This is not an, uh, a referendum of whether you liked this music, whether you cared for this, doesn't matter. But a lot of folks are saying, and especially in the black community, because they've been lied to forever. Think about this. They're saying, you know, a lot of people can be made to look like they die of one thing versus another. Now, number one, let me just say this. As you know, there's a couple of things here. Whenever people die in prison, and you die specifically of you die of things that look semi-natural. There's something called noose on a bun. And this is what we thought originally when Epstein died. Noose on a bun is I can give you something which is a poison today. It can either build up slowly or it can be used almost like a binary. I mix poison number one in something there's no particular trace of it. I mix it with something else. In the course, whether it's water or this or whatever you drink in terms of prison or jail, and all of a sudden you will die. And the residual, the breakdown chemicals, the residual components are basically things that are found normally. Potassium and chlorine and nothing really special. That takes a lot of folks, and you don't do this without some serious help from folks. That's number one. So when they killed Epstein and they broke his neck, they basically wanted you to know specifically that was a choke. That was choke. Remember, choke versus carotid. Choke versus you know carotid compression. Choke right here. Smashed thyroid cartilage, smashed hyoid bone. They wanted you to know this. They wanted you to say, oh, we killed him. Oh, we, we killed him. We didn't go for this news on a bun business. Do you know that when people are in, and when people are, when you want to prevent somebody from being killed in or, or committing suicide, quote unquote, in prison, prison, you pick them up and you fly them out to Butte, Montana, into some warehouse, some place where there's like four people in a hospital. It's a security prison. Nobody knows about it, but they're not going anywhere. It's very secure, but they have, not only are they watched, but they have special monitors to see any kind of change in a skin temperature, uh, any type of, it's 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 the suicide proof place. Paper clothing, paper cups. It's so terrific. They didn't do that. I don't want to keep bringing up Epstein, but let me just show you what they did right in front of you. Because these people don't care. They don't care. So if you find out that, hey, of this uptown group, everybody from Kim Porter to Heavy D, they're all dead. 
They don't care. Why? Because they just killed public enemy number one in front of you. They broke his neck right in front of you. And then they told you it was suicide. So understand, there's a group of people out there. We don't know who they are precisely. They don't care how bad things look. So whenever you, whenever you say like, well, that's kind of unlikely. Epstein's murder is unlikely. And nobody got, nobody's gotten to the bottom of that yet. Nobody. Nobody. You've got Michael Biden who's like, I'll testify. Nobody's talking to him. So here's Diddy. It's all falling apart. This is the most fantastic story of anything I've ever heard. And if you like true crime, if you like to really get to the investigative aspect of it, you will find this story nothing but fascinating. And we can guess later on about, you know, why. The why part is I'm a little bit... I'm a little unsure of that. I'm not sure. But let me just start back to what I said originally. The bridge. BS. Okay? You got that? Kate. BS. This story. BS. Caca del Toro. Mierda. Merd. Do you understand it? Nonsense. Hokum. Bunkum. Balderdash. Hooey. It's complete crap, the whole story. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's nothing but fascinating. It is nothing but fascinating. And they want you just to, they're basically telling you, shut up, go away. We don't care who you are. We don't care. We killed Epstein in front of everybody. And you think we're going to give a damn about, about Diddy? Come on. Diddy, uh, look what 9-11 was. Nobody, there wasn't, there's nothing. Remember the NIST report? I don't want to, I don't want to dig through that again. I don't want to dig through that again. I know there are people who, you know, whenever you say this, whenever you say, you know, I don't believe the official story of this. If I walk into a place and I say, Oh, this was uh, this was a natural uh, this was a natural uh, a fire. And you say, no, I think this is arson. Oh yeah, well, who did it? I don't know. Why would somebody want? To, I don't know who or why. I'm just saying that the official narrative that you've given me, I don't agree with. That doesn't mean I know who. If we come into a place and there's a there's a woman. Remember, there's four kinds, actually five, but there's four types of murder: Nash, N A S H, Nash, national, a natural, accidental suicide, and homicide. Big Nash, natural accidental suicide homicide. Let's say let's say we walk into a room, walk into a building, and there's an old woman. And she's got her hands tied behind her back. She's got twelve shots in the back of her head. Twelve shots, different different calibers, different guns, close contact, powder deposition, point blank suicide, execution style. Twelve shots in the head with her with with her hands tied behind her back. Is that natural? No. Accidental? No. Suicide? No. Actually, the, the, the fifth one is actually unexplained. How about homicide? Bingo. That's homicide. Now, if I said, well, who did this? I don't know. Why would somebody want her dead? People loved her. I don't know. You see what they do? So what you're saying is you're, you're disagreeing with the official narrative of the official story. That's all you're saying. You don't know who, why, when. Nobody knows why. I don't know. Why do you want to kill? Did, I don't know. Why, why, who's Kim Porter? I don't know. But be a detective. They think you're stupid. And you're not stupid. They think you're stupid. You understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? They think you're stupid. Do not ask for permission to ask questions. Period. And they're going to call you a conspiracy theorist and they're, they're going to call you all these names. Fine. Whatever. Whatever makes them happy. Now, one more thing I want to say something which is important. Because I love this man and I've got to make a brand new little, uh, what am I trying to say, a brand new ad for this. But if you go to MyPillow.com promo code Lionel, I've got to tell you this. MyPillow.com promo code Lionel. They've got the $25 extravaganza. MyPillow.com promo code Lionel. This is, this is it right here. This is it. This is right there. That's the link. And very quickly, I'm going to just tell you this quick. This will blow you away. 
Look at what they have if you if you just go to mypillow.com promo code Lionel. You ready for this? Let me tell you what you get. And it's just in it's well, I just had it here. Where was it? Where the hell is this thing? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There we go. Bed sheet sale, 50% off. Bed sheets. $25 extravaganza. My towels, six piece towel sets, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Giza Premium My Pillow, Queen Size and King Size, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. $25 extravaganza, slide sandals, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Two pack multi use pillows, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Dog beds, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Beach towels, coming up, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Four pack dish towel sets, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. And finally, couch and recliner pillows, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. You, 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 you can't do better than this. And you'll never meet a finer bunch of people with an American product in an American setting in an American company. And they tried everything they can to ground him into dust. And they did. MyPillow.com, promo code line. I'll do it right now. And thank you right now, dear friends. Thank you, X Porter, for a super sticker. I appreciate that. Now, let me just say a couple of things before we forget. Um, I want you to think about this. And there's a movie on, there's a movie, there's a documentary on, which, which is really interesting. Did anybody see the Alex Jones um, documentary about Sandy Hook? I don't want to go through that. Because it's, there, there's a lot that's wrong with the story that I takes too long to, to explain. But I want to ask you this question. Do you believe that you have, give me an example. Do you believe that you have the right to question whether we landed on the moon? I don't want to, just my, my question is, not did we land on the moon? I'm not asking that. But do you have the right to say, I don't think we landed on the moon. I think it's nonsense. I don't believe any of it. Uh, because of the suit, Orion's belt, this and that. I, I just, I don't think we have it. I don't know. Okay. Do you have the right? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Today's Easter. Do you have the right to believe in it? Yes. Lori Partridge. Ladies and gentlemen, Lori Partridge, our dear friend, a woman whose favorite, who likes Russian aircraft, Disasters, airplane disasters, is that videos? I think it's that or dash cam. I always, I know it's Russian, and I know it's disasters. She's been with us forever. Lori, so good to see you. Lori Partridge, everybody. Susan Day. Uh, uh. This is the real Lori Partridge. So anyway, here we go. Let me ask you this question. So you think that. We didn't land on the moon. All right. Fair enough. Well, let me ask you this question. What happens if when you say that, somebody goes on and slugs Buzz Aldrin? And you said, no, wait a minute. I, I never, I never, I never said that. No, you said that that's a lie. He says he landed on the moon. So you're calling him a liar. You said it never happened. Buzz Aldrin's going around. He's doing pro. He's doing uh, appearances, and they're now they're calling him up and they're driving him crazy because you said. But you said, wait, 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 wait. I didn't. I didn't say to 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 hurt him. I just. Well, how can you deny the existence of landing on the moon, which is you are right? I'm not advocating that. I'm just bringing this up. How can you say this without somebody perhaps maybe? Do you see where they're going now? So they're going there. The issue is simply this. We're looking now at almost an incitement theory. And the incitement theory is what scares the hell out of me. That scares me. That scares me. Because, and then, and then the best part is, let's say Buzz Aldrin sues you for defamation. Because you said he's a liar. And he said, wait a minute. You said, I didn't say he was a liar. You said... The whole thing was a lie. And anybody who says they landed on the moon, and he said he landed on the moon, and he's a liar. They're all liars. You said this. 
You said this. You told your 4 million people. Now, let's assume that happened. Let's assume that uh, Joe Rogan says, well, I don't believe in that. I think that's, I think these people who said there's, I believe in uh, aliens and UFOs. And therefore, I think people who, who, who said there aren't, oh, so guess what? Neil deGrasse Tyson gets slugged by somebody and he blames you because somebody said you were the one who denied it. You see where we're going? I'm going to discuss it with you later some other time, but let me explain something to you. They're going to destroy the First Amendment of free speech and they're going to do it in a way. And by the way, let me also tell you that there are ways where you can be extremely irresponsible and you can basically say, I want you all to go out and clobber Buzz Aldrin which of course I'm not saying at all. I'm using this as an example. That's irresponsible. That's not defamation. That's not defamation. I mean, you could say, yeah, you defamed him because he's crazy. But what you're really doing is you're actually saying hurt him or do something. It's weird. It's not classic defamation. It's not classic incitement via Brandenburg in those cases. It's different. And that's what we have to look for. That's what they're going to do next. That's what this stands for. Joe Rogan had the right to doubt the efficacy of the, of the COVID vaccine, but he put a lot of first responders in harm's way. He made a lot of people, oh, okay. See what's happening? Oh, okay, I got it. You see what he's doing? You see where they're going now? They're, they're taking it, not just that you were, uh, wrong in saying something, but that you were reckless, and you, you are, you are now liable for a variety of stuff that has really nothing to do with. Uh, how do I say this? It has nothing to do with um, merely what you said, but almost derivative issues. This is probably too late to be going through this, but that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in where this is going next and how they are going to be saying, how they're going to be putting all this stuff together in a unique way where they're going to be saying specifically that what you did was not just defame someone, but what you did was you, in a way, made somebody unsafe by virtue of your disputing something. Say goodbye to the First Amendment. It's it's real. I mean, it's it's fascinating because what you can say is, is Alex Jones does he have the right to say something? Well, of course he has a right to say it. But when you say people's name, when you say people by name, when you say when people by name, then you're putting them into a different into a different situation. It's a it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's a terrible case. It's a horrible case. My heart breaks. You know what I wish one person would have done? I just wish I would have. I Frankly. And there's some other people out there who are so into this. They make Alex Jones look like a choir boy. But there are others who are, I mean, vehement. They, they don't just dispute this. They hate. There's, some of these people hate the family members. And not all the family members were involved in lawsuits. But I wish, I just wish, I could have gone, I wish, and, and they, not really, but theoretically, I wish I could have, as the plaintiff's lawyer, gone to anybody and said, go to the, go to the state and say, give me the worst pictures you have, the worst. I want to see the worst. Give them to me. I'm going to have them mark them up, and I want to have them. And I'm going to go up to somebody who says, this is ridiculous, never happened. Okay, good. I'm going to say, here, here, look at that. What do you think that is? Is that fixed? You think that's fixed? You think that's, you think that's a fake? Look, look at it. Have the worst. Show the jury. Have them start puking. Look at that. They're making this up? Here's the, here's, here's the uh, medical examiner. She was right there. They identified the body. You think this is a joke? What, is this a joke? You know, you, you didn't see where the bullet holes were? They're right there. Th this, this is the thing that I wish about. I, I, I want to see. It's that, you know, when you're seeing cases and you're wondering, where's that one 
that one thing that just cinches this. Where, why does somebody just do this? Do me a favor, really put it on the line and make somebody sit there and say, here, deny this, deny this picture. Here, here, here's another one. Deny this. No, no, don't go anywhere. Look at it. And this one and this one. And now people look at the way and say, no, 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 you want to do it? This is what we're talking about. I don't know why people do stuff. I don't know why people go on the air and say things happened or didn't happen. I don't know why people get so mean. It's one thing when you can say, well, you know, I have some problems as opposed to, you're a liar. You know, that, you know, this is because something happens and I've seen it before. And I don't want this to get this way with Diddy. I don't want this to be with Kate Middleton. I don't want this to be about the bridge. I don't want the, I don't want, I don't want the bridge tender to turn around and sue everybody because now I have had to move because I've got all these people calling me in the middle of the night saying I'm a liar and I, and I brought the key bridge down. And then, and then you've got Buckingham Palace, and now there's there's a, a security threat because people are are yelling at the king because he's involved. No, there has to be an ability for us to to dispute things and use our precious First Amendment right to dispel, but also to maintain a decorum and a sanity. That's the thing which I want to figure out. We don't have to be in civil, uncivil. We don't have to lose civility and decorum and kindness. We don't. We, I mean it. We, we do. You, you can say whatever, whatever you want. You can see this. You can say, you know, Hunter Biden. I think, very frankly, I do not believe your your claim that uh, the big uh, the big guy was not your father. I do not believe your claim that your artwork was done just without any intentional criminal nefarious uh, plan to to subvert the laws. I, I'm, I'm not, that's one thing to say. I don't believe that. It's another thing to say, I hate you, I do, I, I get to, get to get call him. I mean, no, no, no. I don't know where that came from. That's something we have to do. That's called self, self-control, self-protection, self-administration uh, of this. You don't have to be hateful. You don't have to hate everybody. You don't have to hate people. There's some times where I don't want to say people are mean. I saw this again the other day. Would you do me a favor? Just, just for the sake of argument. Please. It, 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 it's moot at this point. Can you lay off Michelle Obama? There's other stuff we've got to talk about. You look like an idiot if you're still talking about well you know she's mike her name is mike stop it I'm, this is moot and i'm sorry a lot of folks don't like this they took they took great umbrage of what i said what was the point of going after uh, uh macron's wife is that you're a man i know this doesn't make any sense and i know people I know people don't want to hear this, but I want to have as few extraneous issues associated as possible so we can get to the really important stuff. They, some people were so happy that Candace Owens brought up whether Macron's wife was born a man. So let me tell you something, just like, just like they're going after Shmuley Botiak with his, his uh, quote, you know, the butt plug rabbi. I'm sorry, but this is what happens. You want as few of those as possible. I want to make our point. I want to make our case. And I want to do it rationally. I want, I want to do it based on evidence. That's a position of conjecture and just guessing. Remember, we start off with the, with the, the bridge, Kate, and Diddy. And we don't, we, we don't belie, uh, b- believe, or we're not buying the official story. That being said, we are not offering another version of the truth other than we want to explore this a little bit more. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You understand this? Now let me ask you this final question. Today I asked somebody a question. I said, would you like to hear this uh, piece from Annie Jacobson talking about nuclear annihilation? And I finally found something. 
I finally found a subject matter which more people than not recently have said, no, I don't want to talk about that. I can do without that. This is something that I cannot deal with. This is something that I can't fathom. This is something that I cannot even comprehend. And this is something that pushes the limits of my ability to grasp and to, to, uh, to appreciate. So no, I don't want to hear that. And I thought, but guess what? Then that's the thing we have to talk about. That's what we have to tell politicians. We're dead serious about this. We're not going to sit back and say, well, let's just not talk about the subject. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. We'll talk about Diddy later. We'll talk about Baltimore later. But right now, there is in more and more discussion of nuclear warfare. I've never heard this much. And so we have to talk about that. And now, you dig? You dig, Capiche? All right, a couple of things here. First, dear friends. By the way, I love talking to you. You know that? Seriously. This is the new YouTube website. Not YouTube website. This is the new YouTube channel. It's mine. It's called Lionel Legal. Please make sure you sign up. Please make sure you subscribe. Lionel Legal. You go a little deeper into the stuff, into the legal stuff, which I think people, frankly, love. Because deep down inside, the, the, the legal theory is fascinating. Once somebody explains this to you. Next, once you go to Lens Warriors, Lens Warriors on YouTube. This is the most, this is such a critical channel. Lens Warriors on YouTube. Lens L-Y-N-N apostrophe S Warriors on YouTube. Or an X or Twitter. I don't do that X business. It's Twitter to me. Lens Warriors L-Y-N-N-S underscore Warriors. You understand that? That's critical. And please... Make sure you always subscribe. We need your, we need your uh, involvement and the like. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Laurie Partridge is back, and the world's a better place. You damn right about that. And ex Zorder, thank you, and Laurie, thank you. So remember, civility. We can talk about everything, everything. I want proof. I want data. We can have some hypotheses. We can have a little conjecture, but that does not mean, or that does not elevate itself to that of evidence merely because we're saying, you know, well, this could happen. This could be. That's all. I want to run the tightest, best channel there is. And we can talk about anything, but not the way a lot of people do. Because I'm telling you, the First Amendment is under attack. And I hope you listen to what I'm saying. And I'm going to tell you again, and maybe to you, to till I explain it, I think, so that everybody understands it. They're going after the taking defamation, and they're extrapolating it now into almost incitement and intentional infliction of emotional distress. They're really extrapolating it. All right, dear friends, be with your family. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful and a happy Easter. Uh, I mean that sincerely. It was a beautiful day. See you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Uh, don't ever change me that sincerely. And until then, remember, the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. That's it.